Jeff of all trades, we're back. Again, Jeff of all trades, we are back. I want to thank everybody for listening. Um, this will be on the podcast, which I'm excited to say there, my podcast is up. I actually have a podcast. It says Jeff Osborne, Jeff of all trades. Very happy. I am on the podcast. You can download it. I, I matter now. I feel like I'm complete in my life. And uh, Steven's, Steven's a part of this. He's, he's, it's almost like he has a podcast, too, through my podcast. Steven, how are you today? What's no, up, okay buddy? I'm great. I'm great, Jeff. Good. How are you doing? Good, good. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't wait for today. I, I couldn't sleep since last Tuesday. I, was just, I can't wait to talk about the, these investment properties, what we're going to go over today. I'm looking forward to it as well. It's a great topic, and it's something that uh, most people don't know much about. And so if we can share a little bit of information to help some people find their way to passive income, that's, that's what it's all about. Passive income to the fullest. Okay, so again, Jeff of All Trades podcast is up every Tuesday, 2 p.m., live on Facebook, Instagram. It will be on Instagram and YouTube and all that stuff. Uh, this show is about not just real estate. It is about uh, um, community-focused things going on in the community, buying investment properties in community. Uh, my community is Central Florida. I do talk about others, but mainly this is going to be about Central Florida, where I go every day and all my clients go every day. Uh, next week's podcast is a barbershop in a CrossFit gym. Yes, it's a barbershop in a CrossFit gym. As you can notice, that's where I go. Uh, it's a barbershop and a crossroad gym, really unique. I'm excited to get those guys on here. But today's show, today's show is about how to buy investment properties. Let me clarify that. Today shows how to buy, not find. Finding, we could we could do five different podcasts on that, right, Stephen? That's right. <laughs> you, you know, it's just like finding gold. Um, it's hard. It's not easy. And the guys that make that look easy put a lot of work in. So today's show is not about finding it. It's about buying it. And I couldn't think of anybody that knows more, the, the most out there, uh, the most. Besides Grant Cardone, we're going to leave him alone. Uh, besides Mr. 10X, we're, we'll, we'll get to him in a second. But my boy, Stephen Fennell, um, he is going to dig deep and show us how we can buy an investment property, get that passive income, get that rental income, and that's what today's show is about, is to get that investment property. And a lot of people are like, oh, my God, this is, man, I don't have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000. You know, I got to put a new roof on. I got windows. I got to remodel a bathroom. I'm literally talking about all the things I got to do to my house before I buy a house. But the secret, uh, buy, buy an investment property, I mean, but the realistic part about it is, is you don't need all that money. You can get yourself in an investment in a rental property um, with very little money down. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Right, Stephen? Absolutely. Excited about it. One of my favorite topics. I'm going to go over a couple things and then we're going to dig into the money part. Okay. So when you do this, when you do this, know your market. You want to know the area that you're going to buy in. A good realtor, uh, a very good realtor should be able to assist you with that. Knowing the market, knowing what the market is going to be able to provide for you. You want to figure your rate of return. Um, if, if, if whoever's helping you or if you don't, you want to talk to somebody. Stephen is a master. He can, uh, he's good at figuring out the rate of return. Um, I base all my decisions on him. And when he's wrong, I blame him for being wrong. But, but I, I based all my rate of return. So when you buy a rental property, your whole purpose is to get that investment back, rate of return. And you want to make sure that's dialed in. And don't let your emotions get involved. This is an investment. This is a business. It's not your primary home. And even that, you shouldn't let your emotions get involved. Oh, another thing before we jump into the money. Pay your debts off. Uh, Steve Ramsey. Am I saying that right? Ramsey? Dave. 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 Sorry, Dave. Um, it's good to eliminate your debts. Get, get them debts out of there before you jump into this. Now, other people could say, hey, does it matter? Uh, I'm not saying debt is bad. You need debt to grow. But I'm just saying credit card debts, things that could get in your way if you don't have a rent for a couple months, eliminate your debts. And if you have a partner, Stephen, I'm sure you can relate to this one. Or not relate, but be, um, uh, be or 
agree with this. If you have a partner, choose your partner carefully. You know, choose your partner carefully. I've been in a lot of deals, uh, not investment deals, but just in deals where I'm doing all the work. Uh, just because I, my attitude, my worth ethic is to do everything, and I don't wait for someone else to do it, and I do it all. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm doing all this. Well, why, you know, I, I picked the wrong partner, you know. So that's why I partnered up with this guy on the left or right of my screen, Stephen. He likes to work just as hard as me um, and get the and, and get the deal done for his clients, for my clients. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's getting someone into a home. So the first thing we're going to talk about the the normal way to buy an investment home, and that is your traditional mortgage. That is your traditional mortgage. So um, Stephen, how do how do we do that? Um, and also, you mentioned uh, you can you you can actually instead of buying. Now I was talking about a second home, but you were talking about buying your first home and an investment property at the same time, where you're using that rental income to go to the mortgage. Absolutely, yes, yeah. So, yeah. So so the term, the industry term, is house hacking. You know, we've all heard of the term hacking, uh, but there's also something called house hacking. And, uh, and what that is, is you can buy a primary residence, a primary residence, like a multi-unit family, a, a, a duplex, a triplex, or a fourplex. And you can plan to live in one of those and rent out the other one, two, or three units that you're not living in. And that gives you the opportunity to accomplish two things. The first is uh, you can get in for a low down payment. So FHA will finance it at 3.5%. Uh, conventional will finance it at typically three or five percent. You can get in for a low down payment, um, you know, buying a, uh, a multi-unit property. Now, a lot of lenders will probably hit you with 15 or 20 percent or even 25 percent on the conventional side. But FHA will allow you to get into a multi-unit property for three and a half percent, live in one of those units, rent the others out. Now you have rental income paying for your mortgage so you're living free. And you're obligated to stay there for at least a year since it's your primary residence. And then you can go and do what I would say, rinse and repeat, right? Go do it again. Rent out the unit that you're living in. Go find another one. Make that your primary. Now you got two multi-unit properties. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. So you can you can get a traditional interest rate, 3.5%, like an FHA. That's right. And you're saying two or three or four plex, two or three or four plex. And then um, use that income, the rental income, to help with the your income to pay the mortgage, right? That's and right. then you can buy another one and how, sit and move into that one. Say that again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So after you've met your obligation for FHA, which is you need to stay in that property for at least a year as your primary residence, you can then you know go get another one. Now you can't use FHA for the next one unless you refinance the first one. To a conventional loan. Oh, okay. So to a loan, then go find another threeplex or fourplex and buy it as another FHA. Live in that unit for a year. Now you're talking about potentially anywhere from three to eight units, seven units rather, that you have paying you rent while you're living in uh, your next one as well, making making money, passive income, passive income. That what I'm hearing is is you can buy that set, that first property with three and a half percent down. That second investment property that could have two to four doors with three and a half percent down, and you refinance that first property at a conventional. Pray to God that the interest rate is good. Pray to God that your credit looks good. Um, but for people that don't have, for people that don't have a lot of money to put down, um, uh, myself included, that's one way that you can get a second property for very. I didn't, man. That that's really cool. That's now, what if you, um, okay, so for one, it would be great for a single guy because <laughs> if, uh, if you have a big family, that might be kind of difficult, but maybe, you know, a, a good partnership is the wife and the husband being on the same team and having them goals aligned. So, right. you know, she might be okay with living next to all those people and, right. you know, having the kids be right next to all those people, you know, or right. if you're a single guy, I, I have a lot of, uh, New clients, first-time home buyers, and I just met one last week, and he was talking about that same thing, wanting to hit on his first property to be an investment property. And of course, I mentioned what you said, but that's that's a really good idea. Now, what if they what if they did that, and then 
they don't they now they have some more money coming in could they how could they get the second property with a conventional loan how can they get that second one with a conventional loan yeah they could they can get the second one as a conventional loan uh, if they got the second one as a conventional loan they're going to have to put down 20 or 25% if it's a multi unit property that's why i would suggest you take the first property, you refinance it to a conventional, then you go buy this next property as another FHA, 3.5% down. You know, and let me add something too, Jeff. This is a phenomenal opportunity because, you know, there are people right now living in apartments trying to buy a house. And when you initially bring it up and say, well, you know, you could live in, uh, you know, a multi, you know, unit and rent out the others, it's like, well, man, I don't want to live in, you know, that deal. It's like, well, you're living in an apartment now, right? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, it's not different. And so the apartments are nice, though. You see, yeah, them? it is. They're like sixteen hundred dollars a month, granite. Yeah, but you can do the same thing. Listen, if someone's paying your mortgage, think about how much yeah. income you have freed up. If someone's paying for your mortgage, that means you're living rent free. Someone else is paying the mortgage, so you have so you can take as much time as you need to to customize that unit as you want to. So the other wonderful thing about this rental opportunity is that income, the income that you are earning off of those other units can be used to qualify you. It can be used to qualify you for that FHA multi-unit property. So you may, I'll, I'll, take, oh. I'll take Susie B in Florida, right? Two years ago, Susie B only made $20,000. She could barely afford a condo, right? You know that in Florida. Um, but when yeah. we took Susie B to a $300,000 fourplex and we used the income from the other three units that she wasn't living in and added it to her 20000 Now Susie B can afford to buy a $300,000 fourplex, which she never would have been able to buy. So you can use the income from the unit you're not living in to help qualify you from an income standpoint, which is another phenomenal thing about buying multiple unit properties and things of that nature as well. Wow. I didn't, I didn't realize that you can buy that second one that low. Now, going back to the apartments, boy, um, that trend that people want to live in, like... Um, uh, like what you see on TV on them home makeovers, they make the pool area, the barbecue area, the pergola, and these apartment complexes are, are very enticing. You go there, they have an infinity or, or zero entry pool for kids, and they and they have all this uh, big area for everybody to use the gym, and they bet their money on these these up the millennials or whoever I don't keep I can't remember the correct stage of it, but they're going to want to do that. They're going to want to rent instead of buy and that didn't work out this was like 10 or 15 years ago so in florida there's a lot of these brand new high-end ish apartment complexes that have these amenities that are like in new york and you're paying for every you're paying they get you in for that first year for 1500 and that's like maybe a two bedroom two bath that's it and then that second year your rent's going to go up that third year your rent's going to go up now you you might be um down quality a little bit because you don't have an olympic pool you don't have this crazy backyard area into a duplex or fourplex or a twoplex or something like that but you can save your money up and buy that dream house um so that's one spin the main gist of the show if anybody's just jumping on now is how can you get money how can what type of um, how do you get the money to buy your second investment property? Whether you have a first one, whether you don't have a first one, and you're going to move into it and then make that one your investment property, just like what we're talking about now. But the mystery is how do we go? I, I want to go buy an investment property. How do I go buy that? Now, um, do you have it? What else? What else were you going to mention about the traditional way? Let's see. Yeah, well, you've got, from a traditional standpoint, you've got, you know, you've got FHA, you've got conventional financing that are options that are available to you. And the best way, as I said, is to try to find a way to get into it um, as, a, as an FHA if you're going to go multi-unit. If you go non-multi-unit, you still can go FHA or you can go conventional and still get a 3 or 5% down. But if it's an investment property, if it's a rental property, the investors are typically going to ask for about 20% down on any investment property. So, uh, it's, it's, there's options you can take. You can always take the option of a primary residence and live in it for a year. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go purchase it with 20% down and you can get it from a conventional standpoint, uh, as an investment property as well. Those are the traditional methods that you, that you would use if you want to go to rental property or investment property. And I think a lot of people want to try to hold on their, to their money and get their money out, get their money, get their money back in their pocket. So if they're putting 50, 60, $80,000 down, 
on a property to, to purchase it because they don't want to move in it. Their wife's like, you're crazy. I'm not moving into that thing. You're nuts. It's, it doesn't have this. It doesn't have a walk-in closet. You know, I want, I want my own privacy and, you know, all that normal stuff they want, uh, which isn't bad. I want it to. But um, they want to get that money back out and either use it for something else or maybe that's all they, they have. So let's say they, you know what, I, I found a deal. We're not talking about trying to, we're not talking about finding the deal. That's another show. We're just talking about buying the deal. Let's say you found a deal. You're either working with an agent and they, and, and he's good at finding investment properties or, um, or your, your friend or family member or something like that. And you already own something. A lot of people don't realize, like Steven's saying, you're going to need 20% down. Now, can they, can they refinance it? to get that money back out and into their bank account. So they yeah. put that 50, 60, $80,000 down. How would you do that? Like, how, could you get that money back out of that property? You could, absolutely. Obviously, it's going to be contingent upon the equity uh, that will exist in the property, but absolutely, you can get it back out. Now, you know, if, you, if you're pulling money out of an investment property, your loan of values are probably be about 70 or 75% on that refinance, that cash out refinance, but certainly you can get the money back out. So it's different. It's not eighty. It's not that eighty twenty. It's it's lower. It's lower, right? Right. The loan of value is going to be lower because it is a it is a cash out and it's an investment property. Um, but you can get you know you can get it typically as high as maybe about seventy five percent. Which again, if, if the equity is in the property is there, then certainly you can do that to take it out to you know whether it is to go for your next venture from an investment standpoint uh, or it is to upgrade, right? Or to kick yeah. everybody out and you're like, I'm going to put a dishwasher in. And I'm going to charge an extra two hundred dollars a month because of that dishwasher. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. I'm, you certainly can. What's that know? called? What is that called? <laughs> what What's it called when you do what? When Renovate. You, uh, yeah, but when you um, value add or value value add, when yeah. you buy a property, the whoever had it before you has tenants. They're charging uh, lower rent because they either don't care anymore or whatever. The the stuff's all beat up. You go in there. You put a new dishwasher. You have to do something. You put a new dishwasher in there. You can't just raise it for no reason. Right. And then you say, okay, the, the rents are going to increase to such amount. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's definitely the way that, you know, that you would do. You're right. You definitely want to upgrade it and make sure that there are some enhancements uh, to the property that you're, that you're bringing. That's where you're going to get your additional incremental value, uh, whether it be from return on the rent uh, or the return on the equity that you're going to get on the property as well if you look to sell it too. You know what? I forgot to ask. Who owns an investment property? Raise your hand if you own an investment property. Mine? Nope. I don't. I don't have one. Okay. So let's talk about this, Stephen. This is why we're talking to you. How many properties do you own? How many properties do you own? How many? Uh, five properties. Five. Five investment. Five investment properties. Yes. Okay. What was your first property that you purchased? The first property I purchased was a duplex, uh, and if I were single. I would have lived in that one side and I would have rented the other one out. But uh, but I was able to, uh, fortunately, I was able to just go out and buy it outright uh, as a cash deal. Oh, cash money. Baller. Baller being single. Okay. I think we're having a, uh, a connection. Interruption. You still there, Jeff? Yeah. Can you hear me? Break Jeff, you there? Out. Looks like we lost connection. Um, I see you. So bear with us, guys, while we reconnect. Okay. Um, we're showing live uh, on a podcast with Jeff Osborne, Jeff the Realtor Osborne in uh, Orlando, Florida area. Uh, he has a weekly podcast where he's talking about he's Jeff of all trades. He's a realtor, but he's talking about a number of different topics. It's not just about real estate. Um, you know, it's about opportunities that are out there, information to bring knowledge. Um, so we've got uh, we've currently sure. got a uh, interruption in our signal. And uh, we'll, we'll come back and go live here in a second. But while we're doing that, yeah. um, I'll just kind of recap a little bit about what we were talking about uh, until we wait till Jeff gets back. Um, oh, he, Jeff, are you back? Can you hear yeah. me? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Can we're, you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, all right. So I never I, lost you. We're going through uh, a normal Florida crazy thunderstorm, tornado, hurricane warning. Just your normal uh, storms. Okay. All right. Well, I lost you for a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, I've got you. I've got you back online now. So that point on. What a great job of taking that load. You picked up that load and carried it well. 
<laughs> you picked up that <laughs> load, and I was like, I, I heard everything. You could have like, oh, Jeff's not listening. Let's let's get him. Man, this guy forces me to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> like, let me no, run. This is my time to run. I wouldn't do that. Are you back live? Or are, are you back live on all your platforms? Let me ask my yes, uh, yes. I, I got see, thumbs I, up. I now. Yeah, I see it now. I see it now. Good I see it. Yep, I'm I'm sharing it back on my timeline as well. Okay. Um, well, okay. We'll cool. Be, cool. Let's back on. Take we'll it. Regroup. All right. So Jeff, you were asking me about uh, my investment property. Yes. yes. I first one I bought with cash. First one I bought with cash, and as I was sitting there with the seller, I said, "Hey, listen." Um, do you have any other properties? And he said, yes. And I said, well, are they for sale? And he said, they haven't been for sale, but eventually they will be. And I said, well, I want to buy them. And I didn't have enough cash to buy it. And so I asked if he would finance me. And he said, for enough who, money down, who, I will consider it. Sorry. Who asked, who, who's going to finance you? That is, what do you the, mean? The seller. The owner. The seller. So, yeah, the seller. So I, I asked the seller, would you finance? Would you do an owner finance on that other property, that other duplex that you've got? Uh, will you do an owner finance for me? And he said, uh, he said, for enough money down, I will. And so, um, so I ended up closing on two duplexes on the same day, two on the same day. One I paid cash. The other one I did an owner finance with and, uh, structured the deal where I paid some monthly. Well, really, I didn't pay monthly. The renters paid monthly. The you monthly. You weren't living in that one. You weren't living in the second one. Correct. I wasn't living right. in the second or the first, but the amount that I agreed to the seller to pay every month for the financing, it was the renters that were paying that amount. I just had the balloon payment at the end, uh, but the renters were paying that amount. So I was making a little money and the renters were paying for that owner financing option that we put together. But that's how I got my first two properties. Okay. One was cash, the other one was owner financing. Pause that. So the seller was a lender or a bank? No, the seller was just a seller. Just a seller. So I think this is another big thing that a lot of people don't know of. In these wholesaling classes, there's so many wholesaling classes. Nothing against wholesaling classes. I'm not, you know, that's nothing against that. Um, but seller financing is nothing new at all. Um, the, you know, Stephen kind of just disagree with me. There's not as much seller financing because people want to get paid now. They don't want to wait. But in investment properties... And it's still the same thing. I, I look for them every day. Um, if anybody has anything they want to sell or finance me, call me. I want to buy something. <laughs> sell or finance. Let's make a deal. But Stephen did an amazing job by, one, that first property saving up the cash. How much cash was that? Was it over 100 or under 100? It was under 100,000. It was under 100, but I just saved up. I made, made a good deal on it and got a good deal because I had cash. Cash is king. It is. Um, but also because, you know, you have cash, you can get a better deal sometimes. But, yeah. Could you, at that time, could you finance that if you wanted to? Were you? Able I could have financed it, yeah. I could have financed it. Were you uh, in mortgages? Were you working in mortgages then? I was, absolutely. Oh, so you, you knew. You knew the secrets to the trade. You knew the secrets to the trade. Absolutely. Yeah, you betcha. You betcha. Okay. I could have financed it. I could have used, I could have used a couple of different traditional or non-traditional financing means. I could have used the conventional and put down 20%, uh, which I have that. I could have done, I could have gone yep. with a non-QM type of a loan, which is a non-Fannie, Freddie, or conventional type loan, uh, or I could have done the hard money route as well. So I could have done a couple of different ways to do to finance that, or owner financing, which is the one I chose. And that's my strategy, right? Owner financing is my strategy. That's, that's the one I like best. If I go in and I have enough money that I can put up down, and then I could give the owner some compelling monthly payments and then build into that some, uh, some interval balloon payments, uh, and then have a short time frame to pay it off. Uh, that's, that's how I get the owners to accept owner financing. They're not keeping it for five years. I typically do it anywhere from 18 months to two years. And in that time frame, I either pay it off with cash, go get some investors to come in, or just do a refinance of that particular owner financing using some other non-traditional methods such as hard money or non-QM. All right. You, you, you said a couple things really fast there. Yeah. Um, we're still on your, we're just, we're in your second property. Still on your second property. You okay. bought it with cash. The sec, the second one, same seller said, Hey, I, I can't get it. I, you probably, well, no, you wiped out your, you wiped out your cash, but right. you still had it. You gave him a deposit on that second one. So right. that 20% or was that less than 
It was um, it was it was less than twenty percent. It was about ten percent. Okay, but keep in mind that first property that this is awesome because you paid it off. All that were you you're living in one of them, right? You're living no, there. no, uh, I, was, I just did that straight. Oh, uh, you weren't living there. No, uh -uh. that's why I said if I were single, if I were single, I would have been living in that one. <laughs> but you, so you but had a primary residence. Uh, you had a primary residence. Yes, exactly. Did you have a mortgage on that, not to get person or yes, yes, you did. I so did. you had a mortgage. You bought this one cash. Now, yeah. since you bought it with cash, that monthly is just money besides the ex expenses and and the cost of doing it. That's just going in your pocket, going in your pocket cash. to cash. pay back, yeah. you know, to build that reserve back up. So That's that. Right probably helped you with the, buying the second one by knowing that you could pay that monthly payment, but pay in bonuses to pay it off faster, right? Correct. Correct. So you just yep. weren't relying on that, that property to give rent that you're paying him a monthly payment, but you have this other one that you paid off completely that you can take those payments, save them up, and then give him a balloon payment here, a balloon payment there. And that's and that there's deals like that. I, I say it's hard to find those deals. Doesn't mean they're not there. They're not there. And that's really where you're going to get a, a great deal because d to dig deep in the seller financing, it's not. Um, it, there's not a bank. It, it's not based off of the uh, prime rate. Blah blah blah. You negotiate the interest rate, and normally you negotiate a lower interest rate than what you probably would have gotten with the bank. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. Closing costs are a lot less. There's 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 no realtor normally, uh, which isn't a bad thing. And you know, obviously, I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor at seven days a week. You know, AKA problem solver. But if someone can do it on their own, more power to them. I'm all about that. Uh, yeah. And that's why we're doing this podcast is to teach people to go do this so they can provide a better life uh, for their children and children's children. And I tell you, Jeff, though, I mean, even though you don't have to, I still would recommend you have a realtor. Like I had a realtor on every one of those deals, every property that I've purchased. I've the had second a one? That second? Absolutely, yeah. And How the did third. you have it on the second one? You, you... Yeah, the, 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 real, the, the realtor who helped me find the first one is, is who I used, even, even though I was doing an owner financing deal on the second one, uh, because that realtor was diligent enough uh, to, and, and, and looking out for my interests, uh, I wanted to make sure that that realtor, you know, benefited from the second one. And then I continue to use that realtor in the third and the fourth as well. So, um, you know, I would recommend a realtor because there's so oh. many laws out there. There's so many different things that you have to be aware of. Um, I, I would recommend a realtor. I mean, yeah, you can do it without, but I'd recommend you get a realtor. It could just fall apart. It could fall apart. So uh, not to say don't use a realtor, uh, but what Steve is trying to say is a realtor is the glue that keeps it together. Uh, if it is you and the seller, there's no policing. There's no law. The only thing that you have to that you could rely on is taking them to court. And a judge is never going to kick a seller out of their house or kick tell the seller to kick their tenants out of their house for you to buy it. That seller could change his mind a week before closing and say, "I want ten more. I want ten grand." You know, I went to bed. I woke up. Uh, you know, uh, God came to me in my sleep and said, you need to get 10 more grand. You need to get it and you, you're going to go get it. Now, like I said, I don't know if I told you this story before that's happened to me when we were dealing with the four sale by owner with the client and we didn't pay 10 grand, but we did pay two just so we, we were a week from closing. They needed to move in. So a realtor provides all the forms. They provide a level of, um, policing, a level of, of course, integrity, professionalism, but it's less likely for the deal to go sideways because the seller and the buyer have this middle person to talk to. And normally if a seller and a buyer talk to each other directly, and I'm going through a situation right now currently where it's a kind of like a four sub by owner and I'm in there completely. The reason why I'm part of this deal is to get it to closing because if it wasn't, the seller's never going to tell the buyer what they really want. The buyer is never going to tell the seller what they really want. And then it's going to build up. It's going to build up. And then they're not going to close. And then it's going to come out and be like, no, 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 no. You know what? I said, I, I, I've been thinking about this too much. I, I want this. You know, with that agent, it's like they feel more comfortable telling that person. It's like the third party. Hey, this is what I want. Go get me that. Are you sure that's what you want? Maybe that person, maybe they're not even asking them what they want. You know, a buyer's not going to ask. They're just trying to get a good, good deal. 
you know. So, yeah, that agent, 100%. And that's good. And it's not like, you know, they're like, oh, we want to save on that commission. They just, you know, they're getting these commissions, these commissions. When you broker a deal like that, it's not 2%. It's not 3%. It could be a fixed amount, you know. It's not necessarily a percentage of it, you know, because there, there might the work is already done. And that's what I always offer my services. It's not, it doesn't have to be a percentage. It could just be a flat fee of this to transact and to do all the paperwork. But that's good. I'm glad that you, uh, you know, you used a, uh, an agent to keep it safe. Very good. Absolutely. No, you got to. I think it's important to protect yourself. You're going to save, you're going to save a few dollars, but you know, you can expose yourself to a lot more. So I, I would recommend it. And on the buyer end, well, you know, the sellers, well, but yeah, kind of both of you are paying it because it's making that amount higher. Oh, or the seller's paying it as closing costs if they're not adding it to the loan. But yeah, well, and you can look at it this way. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. And without the agent, more than likely, it, it, there's a lot of times where it doesn't work. Well, and, and Jeff, and you know, I've gotten a deal done because I understand the value of the agent. And so uh, sometimes when I go and I ask, like on my last deal uh -huh. for an apartment building, I asked the owner to finance me. The circumstance and the situation was right to where he was willing to do it. But his hesitancy was paying the commissions to the realtor. So I knew this could be a potential hesitancy because of some other offers that I'd made in past in apartment buildings. So what I did is strategically go in and say, well, here's how much I'd give you for the down payment. And the owner, when the owner balked a little bit at it, uh, I came back and countered and said, well, I'll give you that as the down payment and I'll pay the realtor commissions. Right. And then the deal got done. Because um, okay. that is really going to be the hesitancy between uh, between owner financings because the seller doesn't want to pay the commissions on an owner financing deal. So either you've got to make sure your down payment is big enough or you come back and you counter and you say, well, I'll pay the commission. So once I said that, the deal got done right away because that was the holdup. It's just finding out what the pain point is and trying to overcome that. And, or try to have it in at the beginning. Already know that they might have a hookup, a hiccup, hookup, hiccup and know that they're not going to want to pay it. So this deal, it includes this percentage minus that. That's what you're going to get. Okay. Okay. But, but a lot of it, man, they just don't make it. They don't, you know, the TV, the, um, I don't want to say Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Robert Kiyahasi, I'm saying his name wrong, but it's like, we have this fake, um, pr um, picture. We have this fake thing that, Oh, you can in these wholesale classes, you can go get this done. Go get the wedge. You don't need an agent. You don't need anybody. If you're working full time and that's not what you do is real estate, the chances of you talking someone to selling their property to you at a loss and then you selling it for more is not going to happen. It, you know, um, it just, it's just, it frustrates me. So a realtor, we're there for a reason. And that's the reason is to get a transaction done the right way. Uh, instead of the wrong way. Agreed. So sorry, I didn't mean to veer off on that, but I thought it was important to to just add that information because, you know, I, again, my strategy is owner financing uh, or just straight out cash um, purchasing. But um, there are some there are some issues and some potential roadblocks you run into uh, and just know how you want to handle them. That's how I handle them. So. Okay. How many you, you said you own five properties? I do. Talked about two. So that means we have five left. Or three left? <laughs> yeah, three. three. Yes, yes. I've got, I've got, uh, I've got a single family, and uh, I've got an apartment building and another duplex as well. Apartment building? How how big is the apartment building? Like 70, 80 units? Uh, yeah, I wish. So, <laughs> not yet, not yet. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's thirteen, twelve functional, but thirteen units, um, and um, you know, twelve that are functional. The thirteenth unit. Is not functional right now. It's more of a storage room, but basically it's a functional. Need just, needs to be renovated. just needs to be renovated. It's been used as a storage room primarily mm. from the previous owners. So we're going to renovate it and ultimately get it running so that we can get it contributing to the ROI, return on the investment. How big are these apartments? Uh, they're two in ones, uh, and then there's uh, some one in ones. Yep. Um, okay. yep. Two in ones and one in ones, yeah. Are they all one story? Is it or two story buildings? Uh, two, yes, two story buildings, both of them. Okay. Okay. I don't see a lot of those smaller units in central Florida. Not, I'm not saying they're not there, 
but I don't. I see a lot of big buildings, like a hundred units, two hundred sure. units. Sure. And when we were talking about this before, I, I want to bring this up too. When okay, so you you bought your second, your third. Now you're like, I want to. I want a thirteen unit building, like Stephen. You know, he's like, hey, I'm going to get this bad boy. So let's talk about that for a second. One, how did you get it? And then two, if you're working full time, being a number one um, premier lender with the AKA Problem Solver and many other realtors. How, who takes care of that apartment building? How's that well, apartment building being taken care of? Well, we have property managers that, that manage that property. You know, I think it's important that we uh, focus on what we do best and let the people who do those other activities best, let them do those. Because, um, you know, I, I, for me personally, I got to stay focused on what I do best. When I try to become uh, a multiple, you know, guy, I don't tend to get the same uh, effectiveness on all those activities. So I have a property manager that manages those properties and um, and I can focus on continuing to go find opportunities and also doing the lending aspect that, you know, that what I do. But um, how I got it was, you know, I had, um, I had a realtor and the realtor was looking out for opportunities. Um, I was looking out for opportunities and we just so happened to find this one. And we opened the negotiations. With, was it listed? Was it listed on the market? Yeah, it, it got listed. Yep, it got listed. Uh, you know, we found it as soon as it got listed. Uh, we have, a, you know, we've got a search set up using MLS, and uh, I'm, I'm constantly on the prowl and looking out for those opportunities. So uh, as soon as it hits my email, you know, it's like, hey, let's jump on this one, and uh, and we started negotiations. We negotiated, you know, probably for three months before we were able to get it done. Um, but you know, they, that's that's just what it took. So it was active for three months while you were trying to negotiate a price. Yeah, it was. There was there was an initial offer that came in that was a little bit better than our offer, um, but ultimately our, our offer won out. Uh, but it took a while. The negotiations took a while for us to finally get it done. But it took three months ultimately to close. Now, if you okay, uh, wow, I, that's I never. Uh, oops, sorry, I just shook it. I didn't. That's a long time. That's interesting. If you owned, if you own, if you owned four of the properties. How did you buy this one? Did you buy this one cash? Um, did you find gold in your backyard? Did you are you diamond hunting? Would you rob a couple banks, a couple liquor stores? What'd you do? No, I didn't. Um, okay. I, I went in with my uh, with my owner financing strategy. Um, you know, same thing. Went in and asked, you know, if I could put down so much money on it, they would finance me for two years, um, give me some time to either pay it off or. Uh, to find alternate financing, um, and, you know, same thing, same exact strategy. It was an owner finance deal, uh, you know. On, on Advertise it owner finance? Did they have it? At no, no, they did not. Oh, Cash. oh so Cash. just because Cash. it doesn't say it doesn't mean you can't ask for it. That's correct. That's correct. You can always ask. You can always ask. Circumstances sometimes dictate and warrant the willingness of an owner to do owner finance. And you just got to ask. It's a it's a it's a method of uh, method of madness to just ask and find enough opportunities, ask enough, and eventually you're going to run into somebody who's going to give you the opportunity. That's you know what I'm going to start asking. I'm going to yeah. say, hey, can I own or finance and take a year and a half to pay you, or would you want to get paid in thirty days? Yeah. And see if they say no, a year and a half is fine. I don't want that's thirty days. I don't want to get paid that fast. But yeah. no, joke, all joking aside, those bigger, you, the, it, the harder it is to buy, the more willing they are going to own or finance. So that might be something right there. If it looks like it's going to be a tough way to, you know, the today shows about where do you come up with the money? How do I get the money to buy my investment property? Um, there's no money in the shoebox. There's no money in the backyard. Um, family, you know, they, they, they're out of money. So how do I get it? So. That was a 13-unit building. I don't know. I guess it was listed conventional loan or cash, conventional or cash. Your agent and you, very intelligent, uh, looking for, um, you know, hey, let's see if they'll do owner financing. You've done owner financing before. And I, the harder the property, the more willing they probably are to do owner finance. I think a lot of people try to do owner finance for their primary residence which is very difficult because that person is trying to buy a house with you buying their house. But the, the more challenging the duplex, the, the purchases, the bigger the number, I would assume that one was like $7 million, $20 million or, or $90 million, that something like that uh, in that range. <laughs> yeah, right. Big baller, big baller. It's not in Florida. It's not in South Florida. <laughs> I'm in Kansas City. <laughs> Miami, it's not in Orlando. 
But <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, was it under a million or over a million? Or uh, you don't have to tell us the number. It was under a million. Under a that, million. That's still really good. You know, that, that, that's still really good. And the whole the the whole purpose of that. Now you have a bigger portfolio. Now you could now if you since you have five properties, can you use those five properties to get money um, to buy another property? I can, yeah. I mean, you know, once you have, um, you know, you've got some income that's coming in off those properties, you can monetize those uh, those revenues, right? You can monetize those revenues. It's no different than what happens right now to your mortgage payment. Your mortgage payments are collateralized and they're bundled up and they're sold off, right? It's no different, right? So you got rental property and you got incomes coming in. That's income that you can now monetize to go get more money because the bank or the lender, they know you have consistent revenue coming in every month. So a lot of times they're going to be very happy to give you more money because you have money coming in every month. That's rare. Normally they're not happy. They're not happy. It's all about risk, right? You're a good risk. If you can show around history, you can show these people are making deposits in your account. Hey, listen, that's it's all about risk, and that's a good risk. Real estate's a good risk. So that's one way. That answers one of the question. Once you get two, three, four, five, those units can get you the sixth, can get you the seventh, can get you the eighth. Now, is the goal to pay those off as you go? So the Absolutely. goal is to pay one off, pay another one off, pay another one off, pay another one off. Absolutely. The goal is to be free and completely cash flowing on all of them, you know, so so two, three, I think four of them are already paid off, right? Well, the only thing that's left at this point in time now is is paying off the the so, big apartment are, building. Oh, yours are paid off? Yeah, everything else is paid off except for the apartment Congratulations. building. Congratulations. That's, man, that's huge. That is huge. How all have you been doing that? Towards that, right? So now, now if I wanted to, I can focus on all those rents going towards that. I mean, I'm not doing that. Right. But but I could. Right. I could take all the rents that are coming from the other properties and just pour them into paying that back. But um, I mean, I'm not doing that now, but I could if I wanted to <laughs> playing the stock market. You're buying that uh, um, Apple stock, you know, that, well, I, I would say Amazon. probably. Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Right. Amazon. <laughs> stock. Um, you said something. You said something. Uh, oh, so uh, did you just start doing this like five months ago, three months ago or five or three years ago? No, about three years ago. So it'll be yeah, about three years ago. So relatively new to to this uh, this real estate thing. Um, and I had a good friend of mine who uh, who was willing to help me uh, get into it and, and kind of mentor me along the way. And uh, picked up a couple other mentors along the way. And so I continue to rely upon their tutelage and their their experience. Um, and that's you know that's how I got into it. I was I really had no intent to get into real estate. So you hung around the right people. And those people, you got, uh, you were seeing what they were doing, and you were seeing the impact that it could make, and you said, "Hey, I want to be a part of that." That's right. Why not me? What? Why not me? Right? Why not you? Okay, uh, we don't got too much time left. I don't want to go too long on this. Um, we our last one. What if? Uh, which I get asked this all the time. Oh, and one thing I wanted to bring up: Stephen said that he had a good realtor that he's working with, and if you're wondering why he didn't say me. Me right here. It's not because he doesn't like me. It's because he's not in Florida. Correct. Stephen is in Kansas. He's in Can Kansas or Missouri. Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. And I, every time you say Kansas, I think of Dorothy, like hitting her feet together or something like that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put my 10x hat on for this one. Okay. Ooh, I know that. Guy. That's great. He signed it right there. Yeah, that's what I can't the, read what no. it says. The master. These, these say all kinds of stuff. Don't be a little B. You know, I'm committed. Okay, sure. so I get asked all the time, how's the market doing? It's amazing. Because I'm going to make it amazing. Second question, do you know any great investment properties? Do you know any great? Yes, you know what? I actually do. Now, one way to buy investment properties, and this is all I'm going to talk about on finding them, is the auction. But the auction, I'm only going to say auction. There's other ways. I'm just going to say auction. You need cash. You cannot finance cash. You, auction wants cash. You can't go Steven or another lender and say, can you drop off 300 grand and write me a loan? Can't do that. Right, Steven? That's right. Not Maybe back in the day. Maybe yeah. back in the day. Or in like gangster money. I think yeah. you can do that with gangsters. Or the right. mafia. No, the mafia. Or or they, I don't, I'm saying the wrong thing. But legit, I think you can do that with them. 
That's a high risk, though. Very, very high risk. You, you're going to die if you do that, more than likely. Because you don't pay them back. They're going to cut your arm off. Your wife's going to get mad. It's not worth it. Don't. It's not worth it. So here's another way to go about it so you don't lose any limbs. Um, I'm going to let Stephen explain this. But let's say, Stephen, I need cash money uh, within a week. How can I get cash money in a week? Yeah, I mean, it might not be exactly a week. Right? It takes a lot longer. But, um, you know, there's always hard money loan options that are out there. Uh, the term hard different. money, hard money, which is kind of it's more like private money, right? So it's not going through a bank. Um, sometimes it gets recorded at the uh, the county's office. Sometimes it does not. Um, it's private money, right? Private investors, like you know, you and I could take some of our money and we could give it to what's called a private money lender, and then they will invest that money into different real estate ventures. And the interest is a little bit higher, right? Because you're talking about non-traditional uh, means of qualifying, but it is access. You have access to other money. Uh, and if things are, you know, things are needed quickly, if you need cash, you can go to a hard money lender and a hard money lender will give you some terms. Some of those terms require you to pay it back within, you know, three, six, nine, eight, 10, 12 months. Some will give you a year. You could go without a payment for 12 months. You could go without a payment. You could, you could, you could set it up to where you've got to make some payments. Uh, they can set up where they're going to disperse the money. So it's all different. It depends on the hard money lender. But it is a private money source, a private money source. Uh, just like me as an investor, I choose to put some money in real estate. I could also choose to put some money in the hands of a private money lender so that they can loan it to you to go buy that house that you're going to flip. Right. You wouldn't use private money on a primary purchase. Uh, it's something that you, you're not planning on hanging on to for a long time. You want to make some quick money, get in and get out. Uh, but I would never use it to buy your primary well, house. The well, rates are high. Correct, correct. But um, touching, touching a couple, or going back a couple things. Private, hard money, private lender. There is a lot more than there was before. Um, the only reason, the, the main reason you want to use these is because of the return is so. The return is so high, it's going to outweigh the cost of doing it. This is our last topic. We're going to end it after this. So this is the last thing. Today's show, how to get money uh, to buy your investment property. That We're not trying to find it, but how do you get the money? So the last one we're going to talk about is hard money. You can go to a hard money lender, and they're, they're, they might ask more than a lender. My clients, I hear it every, every closing. Man, they keep asking me for stuff. Why do they keep asking me for stuff? Man, Steven, he just wants this, he wants that. And to everybody, it's actually not Steven, it's the processor. But we can blame Steven. It's okay, let's blame him. But they they might want more paperwork than Stephen. Um, so the interest rate's going to be higher. Their fee, now Stephen has a low, low fee of nine fifty nine hundred and fifty dollars without if you don't need to buy your rate down or buy the PMI or anything like that. Their fee could be um, $3,000, $2,000. So the main reason why you'd want this is, one, the property cannot be financed, meaning it has to be cash. Maybe the roof's missing. Maybe the windows are missing. Maybe the wall's missing. But they're selling it so cheap that the money that it's going to cost you to get this money outweighs it. Now, Stephen, let me ask. Let me ask you this question. I go, I go get that hard money. I sign my life away. I'm like, take it, take it, take my firstborn and my second and my third. And that's only if I don't pay it back because I know I'm going to pay him back. I know I am. And then I get that eight-month deferred payment. I'm like, I'm not paying a payment for eight months. I'm out of here. And then what you can do in that eight months is do the repairs, bring the property, bring that property up to standard, and then talk to Stephen and say, Stephen, I would like to get a mortgage on this because I owe this guy money, and man, he's going to take my kids if I don't pay him. How can I do that? So Stephen, am I correct? Can once that property is in your possession, and it's not a cash purchase anymore because you already bought it, can you give him a loan or give me a loan? Yeah, absolutely. Because you bought you bought it as a conventional loan, right, or as a uh, non traditional investment property, rather. You've uh, rehabbed it, and uh, now that property is in good shape and good condition, probably worth a lot more than what it was that you purchased it at. And so, absolutely, you can do you can do an investment refinance on that seventy seventy five percent loan of value, and uh, pay off that hard money loan, uh, and keep the difference. Keep the difference for for you know whatever you need to do, right. Um, that's the Burr method, right? Buy, uh, you know, you know, rehab it, right? See if you can rent it and then you know, refinance it and get your money back out of it or flip and, it. And these seminars that are like every weekend in Orlando, they're like, 
You can buy rental properties with no money down. You can buy rental properties with no money down. Today's show is not finding them. We're not trying to find them. That's like five shows in itself. Today's just money. How do you get the money? That's how you do it. You go to these companies. Now, normally, they, they want the... It's very rare for you not to have the skin in the game. You're going to have some type of skin in the game. For, for them to do a deal 100% financing, for you, no money at all, which is rare. You can, but you're going to get hit even harder. So don't think that you can have, hey, I have $10. Actually, eleven fifty. You're <laughs> probably going to need a couple thousand dollars, three to four to five percent, maybe 10 percent. And the hard money person is going to figure that out. Remember, they're not going to give you money if they can't see the money coming back. So if you don't have good credit, if you have a lot of debt, and um, I don't know what else, Stephen, if you don't look good on paper, you're not, you're not going to get the loan. Yeah, I mean, it's a private loan, right? So they're going to look at you, and while they may um, give you on some areas, they're also going to look at a lot of other areas that a bank might not look at and have some concerns about it. So, yeah, I mean, certainly you still got to have your ducks in a row because uh, it's private money. It's not a traditional means of collection. So you still have to have your ducks in a row. And I think a lot of people don't realize that um, these shows make it sound so easy, which I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I want them to sound easy because it has to sound easy for people to want to go do it. And they have to see the reward for people to do it. When, when someone buys, and I, I, I keep relating to people buying homes, but that's why people go look at homes first before they go talk to Steven. That's not the right way. The right way is to go talk to Steven or to go talk to a lender and then go look at homes. But that's not how we do it, you know? We don't do that. We want to, hey, I want to go buy a house. Let me go, oh, man, I want this house. Let me go try to buy it. And then they're like, hey, I, man, I need to do some stuff, you know? Um, I, don't, I can't think of any other funny situation to kind of compare that. Um, but, but, that's, but that's what a lot of people do. So going back, today's show about spending money or finding the money to spend on, a, uh, uh, on buying an investment property, I think hard money is a great way. Um, I think hard money is a great way. That can get you started. I'm not opposed to it. My goal is by November of this year is to have a rental property, whether my partner agrees or not. Uh, that's totally another show by itself. But, and I might have to go through that way so I can buy that cash purchase. So to get a little bit more in detail, Jeff, I, I, you know, I have a lot of people, okay, find me an investment property. Hey, I found you one, cash. You know what? I've been marketing this neighborhood. This guy wants to sell it cash. It's a duplex. Okay, you're ready to buy. Normally, my investors have that two to three hundred thousand to to spend on property because they know the stock market's never going to do what a property does, and that's a whole other episode I can talk about. But it's a true story. But I'm going to be in that situation, and I'm going to need that cash. And I'm going to say, okay, I do have some money down. I have ten percent. I have twenty, thirty, fifty thousand. It's a two hundred thousand dollar property. It's a duplex, whatever. And then I'm going to get that hard money, and it's going to cost me some, but the but me getting that foot in the door, sometimes you got to take a hit. You get that first property, and then you can leverage your primary residence and that first property to buy that third property. You know, right. and not a lot of people talk about this. It's like a secret. You know, they don't want anybody to know. Well, YouTube, no, I take that back. YouTube is like all. You know, there's more and more videos. I follow a whole bunch of different people out there. It's just fear, though, Jeff. It's fear, uh, fear of the unknown. You know, you got to think about this. This is not a class that we took in high school. Just like credit, it's not a class they taught us in high school. If they taught us about investment, if they taught us about rental income, if they taught us about good credit in high school, we would all be walking around with extra passive income, and that's just not something that's taught. So when you introduce this topic to someone, the first first response and reaction is, oh, no, I can't do that. And unfortunately, well, that's another show. Yeah, it is. Cool. And unfortunately, that's too bad. Teach. Yeah, and that's something we just have to. That's why we want that to communicate. That old mentality. That old yeah. mentality. Yep. Absolutely. They don't want to tell anybody how they became successful. They want to keep it a secret. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I made all this money. Well, how'd you make it? I'm not. My, my parents said never to talk about it. Never. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and they really didn't make any money. You know, they're just saying that. Yeah. So, okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. That one was kind of a long one. We kind of dragged that on. Um, I'm going to repost this on everything. I actually have a, my own podcast. I'm like on cloud nine. My assistant finally, uh, well, I shouldn't say her. <laughs> But um, it's up. Long story short, I am excited that uh, like I'm making a, a, a mark, a, a, an impression in today's noise, you know, and you can listen to it over and over and over. That's all I do is just listen to myself. 
No, I'm joking. Okay. Um, <laughs> please hit the like button. I'm going to make a video for this on YouTube. Please subscribe. YouTube is very uh, mean and strict. I need like 100 subscribers just to do anything. So go subscribe, please. I'm begging you at this point. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, if you have any topics you would like me to do, Central Florida, any businesses that you would like to come on and talk about your success, let me know. Next week's show, Stephen's not going to be here. I know it's sad. I almost cried. But my boy, uh, Thomas and um, Jose, Thomas and Jose, we're going to talk to them about their barbershop and what it's like having a barbershop inside of a gym. Literally, you have to go through the gym to go in the barbershop. So if you don't want to work out, you're really going to hate walking through the gym because you're going to feel bad about not working out. Thank you, Stephen, for coming on again. Um, we'll have you back on in a couple couple episodes. Anything uh, you would like to say, Stephen? Any shout outs? Yeah, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of the Jeff of All Trades podcast. And, um, you know, just I want to encourage people to uh, step out on the limb a little bit. Don't be so fearful uh, and, and understand that um, you can do it as well. Right. You can get passive income as well. A great way to do it was rental income. If you don't have enough money, there's other ways to finance it. And that's what the purpose of this podcast was today. And if you don't make enough money, there's other ways to you can still qualify as well by using the rental income. So opportunities are there. They're there for all of us. I uh, just got to step out of that comfort zone a little bit. The, amazing. I like how you said step out, get of that comfort zone, embrace the fear. Can they ask? Can, uh, I'm sure, of course. But are you available to talk about a little bit more details? Can you not just talk about details, but can someone give you a scenario and say, hey, this is a scenario. What, what do you think would work? And, uh, and how do they do that? How can they get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be, be happy to do that. They can get a hold of me. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Uh, Stephen Fennell for a home loan. Uh, I'm with Fountain Mortgage. So you can look me up on the web on fountainmortgage.com. I uh, work with Fountain Mortgage as a loan officer. You can also find me on uh, for a home dot loan uh, on the World Wide Web, www the number four a home dot loan. You can find me. That's my website. You can find me there. Find me on Facebook. And call me, email me, text me. Be happy to help assist, provide any information, uh, and it doesn't cost anything but a few minutes. And he likes it when you call after 12 a.m. He likes that. Yeah. And yeah, his information is on the bottom of the page, on on the bottom of his page. Yeah, on the bottom. No, that's my information. Okay. Okay, guys, thank you so much. It was a blast. I look forward to getting on here again and uh, hopefully creating some value. If you did get any value, please subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, so I can keep pushing it out there and hit that like button. Thank you again, Jeff of all trades, 10X, Grant Cardone. Uh, yes, I learned a lot from this guy, but Jeff of all trades, see you next time.